I no longer find it strange when people ask me why Yoruba and you know what I usually tell them because I love the language but there is more and I can't wait to unpack it all with you in this video from an early age I knew I wanted to be a teacher but my mother wasn't having it and after that I just went blank I didn't know what else I could be this cluelessness lasted until it was time for me to go to the university I had to make a choice I needed to choose a course of study so I had to sit out with my school guide and mentor he was my teacher as well and then after you know questions and trying to get into what my likes my passion was we eventually discovered I love languages and he said go for linguistics then you know without further ado I researched about it read about it and I just fell for it I was sold the disciplines prospect especially the versatility blew my mind it excited me and I knew I had to go for linguistics in 2010 I was admitted to study linguistics in the University of Lagos and during the screening process I heard one of the lecturers saying linguistics Yoruba this way linguistics Igbo this way I was confused like okay guys what's going on here so I walked up to the lecturer and told him sir I'm here to study linguistics French he looked at me and told me we don't have offer for linguistics French we only have linguistics Yoruba or linguistics Igbo guys you can guess or imagine how sad I must have been my spirit was dampened I was confused I I didn't know where to start from how was I going to cope <laughs> what was I going to do with linguistics Yoruba I did not even know how to speak the language at the time forget the fact that both of my parents are a kid's a born and bred and of course I grew up with them I did not know how to speak the language my speaking proficiency was limited my reading and writing skills uh, they were below average my listening was great anyway and that was all I had to think that I intended to do um, linguistics French as my major and then take my inner languages um, with German or Portuguese whichever one was available I didn't know where to start from I mean I had my plans all laid out before coming to school and to just tell me there's no linguistics whatever we have just Yoruba and Igbo uh, it shook me it shook me it shook my feet a lot in Yoruba we say Tiakoba Joba Amasha Jeba so I did what I knew would guarantee my the achievement of my preset goals for graduation I learned and I practiced forget the fact that I had embarrassing moments in class where I could not express myself in proper Yoruba and 70% of my courses were in Yoruba language I had to speak read write and take lectures in Yoruba it was a ride but thankfully you know I put my heart to it and I was able to scale through and special thanks to my father who taught me how to tomak in Yoruba when I was a child I think I was in primary school the memory came back and it really helped teaching is a childhood dream for me and it never left when I got to the uni in my second year I realized ah I could actually be a lecturer and yeah that's still teaching yes so you know I just kept the dream alive after school and the composure NYSC scheme that we do here in in Nigeria I my first job was as a teacher I was a I was an English and Yoruba tutor for primary and secondary school students at that elementary and high school for those who are not in Nigeria and it was fun but subsequently after that I got a job as a content writer and that's how I built my content writing profession yeah so but 
on and off on and off i've been teaching yoruba especially but something happened in 2018 i got my first full-blown yoruba content um, writing gig and in the two years that the project lasted of course we created this masterpiece that was well received from by all and sundry both in nigeria and in the diaspora and the more important thing for me is that my love and passion for yoruba language grew it expanded because i came in contact face to face with the beauty the ingenuity of the language the language is so beautiful it's rich i mean you can pick the, the brains of the Yoruba people from just listening to the language. I'm not talking this everyday morning walk with Yoruba that we speak, but the culture, the philosophy, the beliefs, everything that goes into the language is so beautiful, guys. It is really beautiful. And though that's not to say that I'm no longer interested in other languages because that's what set me on the linguistics path in the first place. I'm now more passionate about my language. I mean, what's the point in learning other people's languages and getting too enthusiastic about theirs and leaving mine in the background? So I decided, you know what, I'm pushing mine. I will promote my native language first and foremost before anything else or before any other language. Mm, it isn't much of a transition really um i would rather like to think of it as an addition because i still do my content writing and now i am a bilingual content writer so i write in english and i write in yoruba win-win yes so i mean it's it's not so much of a transition it's just that i've added something new to it and the content writing bit i have found has been helping the old teaching aspect so after that gig I mentioned ended, uh, we finished in 2020, launched the book in 2021. I decided it was time to um, start. I just had to take the first step yeah, because I had these big dreams and vision for this whole Yoruba thing. And I was scared, like, where should I begin? But, you know, I told myself a journey of a thousand miles right begins with one step. And since Rome, no, no house actually, whether room or a hut is ever built in a day. I just have to take the first step, which is what I did. I created this YouTube channel that you're listening to me on and then the page on Instagram. I have been growing it little by little. It's like a baby actually, the way it's great. It's like a baby watching it grow every day. Um, I created those two and yeah, we'll be moving step by step from there since then and at this point i have to say thank you to all of you subscribers all of you watching subscribed or not and followers on instagram because you have been the ones cheering me on i see your beautiful comments i see you know the nice things you see some people send me messages inbox telling me oh they love this page and everything i do and all of that even though i think okay what am i doing i'm not even doing what i want to do yet but yeah thank you thank you if I'm allowed to blow my trumpet, and I believe I am allowed to blow my trumpet, it's that I don't like ideas. I don't usually, you know, scurry for ideas. The challenge would be being able to, you know, stay active online for a long period of time. Um, I'm not a social media bee, so it's, it gets overwhelming sometimes having to be in that space for a long time. I just always want to take a break. Like, okay, I'm dropped. <laughs> so I just want to be away from that space. But as you know, consistency is key when you're doing stuff online on social media and you just have to show up whether you want to show up or not. On the other hand, is this stereotype that Africans are energetic even in speech? And that's a quality I do not possess. So honestly, I sometimes worry and wonder if I'm ever exciting to listen to without my hallmark of Africanness. So, <laughs> and it doesn't even help that I am critical of myself. So, you know, it's just it's just all of that put together. 
However, in addition to this being a passion for me, it is something I chose to do to challenge myself, you know, to be different, to do something different, you know, try something new. So I don't, I'm not big on social media. I don't like to stay too long on the internet or directly being active on the internet and, you know, the whole Africanness thing, that stereotype. I, I just decided let's try something new we can create a balance here yeah? and mm, work something out with it so I'm learning and settling into it gradually it's a steady process and I hope this also motivates you inspires you to try that new thing you've always wanted to do I mean what's the worst that can happen Think about it. Oh. When I was going to set up this channel, I thought, should I do 100% Yoruba or should I make it 80, 70? What should be the ratio? Should it be strictly English? I you know, spoke with some friends. If you were to watch a Yoruba channel, what would you expect? Would you rather have it in Yoruba or would you rather have it in English? Well, anyway, after the back and forth, I decided um, I'm going to do it in English and use Yoruba where it's strictly necessary, you know, to convey, of course, what I am teaching. And so one thing you should expect on this channel is the fact that it is open and accessible to everyone and anyone. It doesn't matter whether you're a native speaker or not because I speak in English and of course in Yoruba where necessary like I've said whenever there's a Yoruba speech I do the appropriate subtitling translation in English and put it on the screen so this channel is open to enthusiasts, native speakers native speakers who do not speak <laughs> you know everybody really and after that on this channel we have categories that I have um, I have grouped into playlists that you will find on the about page. So listing the categories first we have Yoruba lessons include the grammar and every other topic relating to how we speak the language. Next we have Yoruba conversations. Yoruba conversations will cover topics, different range of topics from social to moral to cultural to religious every topic you can think of whether they happen to a yoruba person or not we're just going to draw inspirations from those topics happening or events happening around us and discuss them from a yoruba standpoint so they will serve as an opportunity for us to learn how the yoruba people think how they would react or what they would say in response to such issues such events you know such um happenings as for yoruba history which seems to be the fave on this channel we do have a chapter of yoruba states towns and villages we'll learn their history their origin history you know um the administrative structure in terms of the traditional setting their culture beliefs taboos you know anything peculiar to them that we can find and learn about them Yoruba culture will focus on the cultural beliefs and practices of the people. So we will learn um, different topics ranging from how we do weddings, um, burials, christening ceremonies and other festivals available in Yoruba land. And finally, we have Yoruba entertainment, which is going to come by music and movies. For the music section, we'll wind down with Afrobeats, Juju music and all other Yoruba folk music. and you know um, translate them to english and pick lessons where necessary as for the movies it's just purely relaxation because um, i'm going to be watching movies and reviewing or reacting to those yoruba movies please feel free to suggest movies and music that you would like us to feature on this channel I do not take your subscription, watch time and engagement on this channel for granted. I see your comments, I see your likes. Thank you so much because they cheer me on. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do so now and share with your friends so that they also get to enjoy and partake in this basket of goodness.
and also the more you like the more you share the more you engage with content on this channel the more our chances of reaching many other people who want and are interested in similar content that we offer on Tana Ado. my name is Tana and I am your host on Tana Ado. and you can always reach me via the contact information on your screen let me not let you go and get yourself acquainted with this channel, watch existing videos and subscribe while you're at it. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye.